Hey, what's up you guys? Yes, today we're gonna be doing another creepy video. But actually today's video is not just creepy. It involves one of the most terrifying experiences a person can ever have. Imagine you're going into the hospital to get surgery. Now the doctor invites in the anesthesiologist who is going to be putting a needle in your arm and filling you with drugs that will put you to sleep. They tell you to start counting backwards and as you do, you slowly drift away. Now they're wheeling you to the operating room and you're completely unconscious. They take your body and they put you on a cold steel table where they're going to cut into you. As the doctors are preparing to do surgery, you start to hear things and you start to hear them talking about the surgery and you wonder, wait a minute, am I supposed to be hearing any of this? I thought I was supposed to be unconscious. I thought I was just going to wake up and the surgery was gonna be over. Then the doctor takes the scalpel and it gets closer and closer to your skin and then you feel him cut into your body and you feel every inch of it. You start screaming, I'm awake, I'm awake, I'm not unconscious, please stop cutting into me can't hear you scream because it's all happening inside your head. Your body is paralyzed. You can't move. You can't grab the nurse. You can't tell anybody that you're actually awake and that you can feel everything. And then the surgery lasts hours. It's as if you're being tortured by a serial killer in his lair and you are feeling everything he's doing to you. Then you fall back asleep and you wake up in your hospital room screaming, I was awake, I felt everything. And a lot of people don't believe you. Now this is not just a story, this is a real thing that happens to a lot of people. This is called anesthesia awareness. So anesthesia awareness is when you are conscious during surgery and you can feel and hear, but you can't talk and you can't move because anesthesia paralyzes your body. So first let's talk about anesthesia and what it actually is. So basically it's a cocktail of different drugs that an anesthesiologist who is a specialist with anesthesia injects into your body and it makes you unconscious. It pretty much puts you in a coma. But it's only a certain amount of the drug so that you will wake up. You're not going to be in the coma forever. So first the anesthesiologist will put the drugs into your system through usually your arm or your hand. Now you start to slowly lose consciousness but you also become kind of loopy, almost like you're high or drunk. They even strap you down to the table just in case you kind of go crazy and try to grab things or get up and run around. Then once you are finally mentally out, they can start doing surgery on you. Now if you've ever had surgery before, you notice that when you wake up afterward, your throat kind of hurts, it's dry, it feels kind of stretched out. Well, let me explain why. After they put you under, they put a breathing tube in your mouth. And it's not just a small little tube like you would get in an oxygen bar. It is a tube this big, connected to a huge contraption that they shove down your throat and it goes in your neck. Now I have a couple video clips of this happening and I'm warning you, it is probably the creepiest thing you have ever seen. Check it out. I know. <laughs> Literally horrifying. It looks like she's dead. By the way, I found this on a channel that was just filled with videos of people getting breathing tubes put in their mouths. I don't know why, but I watched like all of them. <laughs> Here's another clip of the same thing happening to a different person. This one fucks me up even more because she actually looks dead and her eyes are still open. Ah! Also, I don't know if you noticed this, I'll do a replay, but you can see the person's neck fill up because of that thing they're shoving in it. Just look at the neck. Huh. Okay, so now that we've talked about anesthesia and how it works, let's talk about what happens when it doesn't work. A lawsuit in West Virginia is calling attention to a risk of surgery that is not often discussed. Patients who remain wide awake and paralyzed while doctors cut them open. It is excruciatingly painful, as you'd imagine. It's also more common than you might think. So they did a study on this, and it showed that one in 700 people can experience anesthesia awareness. And that's a lot. Like, it's not just something that is super rare that has only happened to a few people in history. One in 700. That means in your high school, 
If all of you guys were to get surgery, like four of you guys would get it. Those are terrifying odds. And the fact that this is happening and nobody's talking about it is crazy to me. Now there are certain machines that can be used to help prevent this, usually um, like brain monitoring machines. But these brain monitoring machines that are in some hospitals are only in 17% of hospitals that do surgeries. And those machines are what are detecting your brain function and what's going on in there. And if the anesthesiologist sees that there's peaks or there's something going on, they know that, oh no, you're conscious. Let me give you more anesthesia. Let me knock you out. But if there isn't that machine, then you can't do that. And you are just awake. Now this is something that nobody talked about really up until 2007. And the reason people started talking about it was there was a movie that was called Awake. And that came out in 2007. It was starring uh, Hayden Christensen. And just the trailer alone gave me fucking chills. What? Am I supposed to be asleep okay. right now? Everyone ready to get started here? I can still hear you. It is I'll ever be. Wait, some, something's wrong. I didn't even watch that movie. I, I, I couldn't. Now, after this movie came out, a lot of people came forward and told their stories of their anesthesia awareness. And they were afraid to do that because a lot of people think it's fake. A lot of people think they're being dramatic or that they dreamt it. Well, when you watch these people tell their stories, you know that they are not lying. It just goes on and on and you're screaming inside your head. I know, it's fucking heartbreaking. What's even more heartbreaking is what this man said about his experience. Have any of you ever thought about suicide? The thought entered our minds when we were there on that table and they were cutting into us with a pain that was beyond description. The first thought comes to your head, dear God, come take and take me now because I can't deal with this. <sighs> it's all like, that's, it's a lot to take in. I cannot imagine going through that experience and how that would fuck me up. It's just unimaginable. Well, as I was doing research for this video and I was watching like a lot of people talk about their experiences, I found this story time video that fucked me up. It's a YouTuber named Katrina Sherwood and her video about her experience of anesthesia awareness was the most intense video I've ever watched. I cried, I screamed, it was a lot. So after I watched that video, I have never been more terrified and emotional than I was when I was watching her story time video. So I thought it might be interesting if I interviewed her about her experience and asked her more questions. Check it out. Okay guys, I'm here with Katrina and we are going to talk about her experience with anesthesia awareness. So, I don't even know where to start. First, let's kind of give a small breakdown of what exactly happened to you when you were getting your surgery. In a nutshell, basically, um, from the point when they introduced anesthesia, they sort of start slow, they give you some sedatives, they try to relax you, and then when they get you back in the ER, um, hopefully at that point, once they got you on the table, you're unconscious. And I remember making noise because I was upset that Kesha came on the radio. <laughs> and <laughs> someone looked under the paper towel at me and they realized, yeah, I was still awake. And so I could tell that they gave me more medication by what they said and what they did. And then after that, I was still um, conscious but paralyzed. And after that, they started to prep me for surgery. They had to insert arterial catheters in both my arm and my neck. And the one on my neck went down into my heart. <laughs> and I think that was a pretty disturbing process because when they put something into your heart, it doesn't quite beat. Hold it on. It just sort of shake. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> At this point, you're supposed to be knocked out. You're not yeah. supposed to be able to feel them put a fucking tube down to your heart, right? That's not wrong. Yeah, so okay. that was the first time I realized something was really wrong. Of course, they have to insert the breathing tube and everything to breathe for you. And the only thing I remember in regards to that is pressure and like the burning sensation in my throat. So I'm really lucky, I think, that I don't remember that part. <laughs> Okay. Um, because it was too traumatic, but I do remember, you know, when they started to cut into my arm, knowing that something was really wrong and trying to make noise and, you know, trying to move. Then they got the catheters inserted and they started to do the incisions in my abdomen. Um, I had a pheochromocytoma, which is a tumor on top of your adrenal gland, and your adrenals are on top of your kidneys. So to get to the kidneys, they sort of have to, and they did this laparoscopically. So they insert two um, tools to actually do the surgery. So <laughs> they started to cut into my abdomen, but while they cut, they're also cauterizing. So the tools are burning your flesh to make sure that you're not gonna bleed out. And it, you know, it closes up any capillaries or anything like that to make it safer. But while your flesh is burning, <laughs> you can smell it, which is something that I never even imagined 
happen in surgery. It's something you just never think about, like what does surgery smell like? But while you're smelling it, you're also kind of tasting it. And in case you're wondering, burnt flesh uh, smells and tastes like barbecue and burnt hair. Oh. <laughs> so then I was also nervous because I'm like, okay, I'm under anesthesia. I've got this tube in my throat. People die from vomiting while they're under anesthesia, which is why you don't eat or drink before surgery. So I was focusing on like, okay, don't vomit, don't vomit, because you're gonna die. <laughs> and I remember being really focused on that for a while there. They, in order to get to my kidney, because they're kind of in the back of your body, they have to move your stomach and your liver out of the way. So they put scoops in and they kind of move them to the side. And I became very aware of like being this flesh fat guts at that point because the pain most of the pain was on the surface it was in the incisions and where the tools were inserted but uh, I'm not super familiar with this but I guess your organs inside don't have the same types of nerve endings so I feel a lot of pressure you know when they're like swimming through my body oh (laughs) my god basically like literally they're in your guts moving organs around and you can feel I don't know how many people in the whole world have ever felt what it feels like for their organs to be moved. Probably not that many. When they were cutting into your stomach, what did that feel like? What did it feel to have them cutting and burning into you? It felt like I was being stabbed. Um, I, I, if you've ever had like a severe burn, it really does feel like that. Um, but it also feels like something is being plunged into your gut because they're cutting through all these layers of flesh all at the same time and luckily I think the smell of it was so startling it took away some of the pain and once they did the incisions um, and inserted the tools that was like the bulk of the pain and then occasionally like a tool would get moved and that would be really painful because were you, you know. s- were you like screaming in your head like I'm awake I can feel this stop please stop at first I was and then I realized like what was happening and that I couldn't move and they couldn't hear me because it didn't work the same way it did initially when I was like complaining about the Kesha thing. And I just realized I had to get through it. And unfortunately, like when you're in a lot of pain, like the surgery I think was four and a half hours, but when you're in pain, everything feels so much longer and it felt like it would never, ever end. There were definitely moments where I felt like I could just die and this would be over and that would be better. Oh. Uh, now, okay, so after that happened, you wake up from surgery, you're happy that you're alive. When does this start to fuck you up? Like, do you, you have to go to therapy, you have to deal with this. You told your family and friends, how did that happen? It wasn't until the first night I started to have these flashbacks and it didn't make sense to me for the, the next couple days. And it wasn't until I got home um, or left my parents' house to recuperate that I started to think, okay, maybe this really did happen. And part of me was afraid that people would just think I was crazy, <laughs> that I was imagining it because this is so absurd and it's so rare and... It's not something that you really imagine can actually happen. Well, thank you so much for talking to me. Guys, you need to go to her channel because this story time that she did about this surgery and this anesthesia awareness, it's like 30 minutes long. I was so like gripped to it. I watched the whole thing. I cried. I screamed. It was so intense. I will put the link down in the description. Please go watch it. It'll be on your main channel where she also does DIYs and more story times. Go subscribe. Thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you for sharing this experience. And oh my God, I I can't even imagine what that was like. You don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Fucking the craziest story time <laughs> literally ever. Fuck. Well, there you guys go. Hopefully you enjoyed. <laughs> this video um, and hopefully it doesn't scare you too much to go get surgery. And I just want to say that this is not um, to shame doctors or anesthesiologists. It's not that at all. It's just me talking about a phenomenon that is frightening. But when you are going in to get surgery, please ask a lot of questions, do a lot of research, make sure that the hospital has the brain detecting machine so that there is more chances of you not having this happen to you. All right, you guys, I'm gonna go. If you want more videos like this, I'm thinking about doing one about night terrors. Give me a thumbs up so I know. Also subscribe to my channel right down below and hit the notification bell because I make new videos every day. And if you wanna see all my other creepy videos, I've done a whole bunch of them. I'll put a link to a playlist right at the top of the description below. All right, you guys, stay awake. Bye. One, two, three. Oh my God, it's burning. Oh, it's burning, it's burning. 
I knew it. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> I think it's on fire.